Euclid Square Mall was a shopping mall in Euclid, Ohio that opened in 1977 and closed in 2016. If you've clicked onto this video, then you know what today is. It's Monday, 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 Mall Madness. Every Monday, I'll be releasing a new video on a defunct or maybe not so defunct mall and its history. Make sure you stick around at the very end of the videos. I'd like to see if you, the viewer, are paying attention. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you get notified of my latest mall video, defunct store, or my throwback Thursday videos. Leave a suggestion or a comment for a future video. Thanks. Euclid Square Mall was developed by Jacobs, Visconti and Jacobs, with planning efforts beginning in the early 1970s. Early on, a lawsuit was filed against the developer over zoning disputes, which was dismissed by the County Common Pleas Court on July 19, 1974. This cleared the way for construction of a $37 million facility on the site of the former Chass, Brass and Copper Company tubing mill. Euclid Square Mall opened in March of 1977 as a single level 642,000 square foot enclosed mall with two anchor stores and 92 indoor tenants on 75 acres in Euclid, Ohio. Opening at the mall was a two-story 177,000 square foot May Company and a two-story Higby's department store. There were also five out parcel stores outside the mall, including Dollar Bank, Red Lobster, Stop and Shop, Toys R Us, and another bank. Among the 92 tenants, you may remember Floorsheim Shoes, Hickory Farms, Learner Shoes, Stride Right, Flower Rama, Dr. Pet Centers, Love Cards and Gifts, Huff's Bakeries, My Fair Lady, The Gallery, Caramel Corn, Taco Bell, and CPI Photo Finish. The Euclid Square Mall would pay immediate dividends in the creation of nearly 2,000 jobs, plus huge increases in income to the city from real estate tax on the new mall, which helped the city avoid raising its taxes. The Euclid Square Mall would flourish in the 1980s, but beginning in the 1990s, the mall began to suffer from changes. In 1992, Higby's department store closed and reopened as Dillard's. In 1993, the May Company closed. The store reopened as Kaufman's and the interior was renovated in 1994. By 1997, rumors had erupted when talks started that Kaufman's would soon be closed, being dragged into expansion plans for a separate shopping center. In late 1997, the Zamaya Service Company would close a deal on the purchase of 10 mall properties from Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. It included in the deal was Euclid Square Mall and nine other malls scattered throughout the eastern and midwestern states. At the time of the purchase, Euclid Square Mall was still a somewhat respectable center with vacancy rates at 15%. Though these numbers were below average for the Cleveland market, there was still nowhere near as bad as the 29% vacancy rate at the nearby Richmond Mall or the 31% rate at the Randall Park Mall. One year later, the mall would lose a major anchor when Kaufman's closed and would relocate to the nearby and newly renovated Richmond Mall. This loss would only help contribute to the soon-to-be rapid rise in vacancy. Even after losing an anchor, there still may have been a chance of turning the place around as the mall still had some signs of life, 
but by 1999, it had seemed that Zamias Services had given up. Shortly later in 2000, Zamias would sell the mall to North Carolina real estate investor Hayward Wichard. In just a year under Hayward Wichard's ownership, vacancy rates soared to 87%. By 2002, the mall's remaining anchor, Dillard's, converted the store to a clearance center and closed off access to the second level of the store. The last tenant at the mall, Dollar Bank, closed in 2003. Toys R Us had closed the year before. In 2004, Haywood eventually gave up the idea of ever turning a profit on the property and sold them all at a loss to local businessman Ted Lichko. Lichko's first plan was to fill the vacant anchor store. His idea was Outlets USA. Despite the name, Outlets USA was not your typical factory outlet, but more of an upscale flea market set in a department store consisting of a gallery of vendors selling wares such as furniture, cigarette lighters, tires, and scratch and dent appliances. Outlets USA would feature 150 spaces for vendors on the first level of the former Kaufman store, and if there was filled up, they would open up the second level. Lichko would focus on revitalizing the mall's interior. His first order of business was to reactivate the beautiful fountain system. He put his team to work to clean up the mall interior and get the stores into move-in ready condition. Lichko hoped that the mall would, could rebound by using a Main Street mix of offices and stores. Lichko even had educational organizations looking into areas of the mall as potential business school campuses. Initially, Lichko's plan would pay off. Outlets USA's grand opening weekend would attract nearly 13,000 customers. The success, however, wouldn't last. Outlets USA would close just two years after opening, with Lichko citing that the vendors were a bad mix with the mall. And just like that, the mall was headed back on its course of failure. By 2010, Tenants included Cell City, City Suites Cafe, City Suites Ice Cream, Digital Home Cinema, Express Cuts, Italiano's Bistro, Kim's Nails, Money Mart, Nature Science, Peddler's Exchange, Princess Cakes and Catering, Production Plus, The Dog House, and Woodside Footwear. The shuttered inline stores began to be replaced by churches, and by 2011, there were 16 such facilities in the mall, drawing about 1,000 people for service on weekends. By July of 2013, there were 24 churches in the mall. On August 27, 2013, it was announced that Dillard's outlet would close in September because its lease was expiring. It was the last remaining store in the mall. Over security and safety concerns, the city of Euclid ordered the shopping center to close in late 2016. The mall would be condemned by the city of Euclid, and a year later, demolition would begin. In September of 2017, Amazon announced plans to build a 650,000 square foot fulfillment center on the side of the mall employing 1,000 Amazon employees. It paid over $7 million for Euclid Square Mall and the nearby buildings. The company formally announced the Fulfillment Center project the morning after the land deals closed. Yeah. Demolition of the former shopping center began later in the year, and the new Fulfillment Center opened in 2019. Congratulations, you made it this far into the video. When I find you, pop quiz, hot shot. So let's see how close you were paying attention to my video. So how many anchor stores closed in this mall? So if your answer was four, give yourself a hand. You were paying attention. Thanks for watching. So what do you remember about this mall? Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, 
or a suggestion for a mall from your childhood. Or how about your favorite mall? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Eric C. Productions.